throw room and a garden tour for you guys to see everything I've been doing and how I set it up I'm gonna walk through that too so on the walls there's a mylar reflective material you can order that and get the tape too it is a gorilla tape you're gonna want that you're also gonna want zip ties and cordage you're gonna want to stock up on that stuff because they're a useful material to get things done now lights these are quantum board style they got a little dial and they are nice they're growing everything under them I have been for a few years now this one I don't know the name of it but I got it from my neighbor it's pretty big and it covers a wide area so I like that but these ones are really cool they're single wide and double wide and then down here is pond liner I laid that down ultimately for a permanent floor and it keeps the water from getting underneath with tape on the seams the gorilla tape and then there is my wood burning stove 2x4 built the frame around it the insulated pipe it's a heat exchange magic heat and there is pea gravel and sand underneath these bricks I'm just now finishing it so it's still a little dusty with sand it's filling in the cracks there's a shield back there which protects it from burning the wall now these fabric pots down here I fill them with a potting mix that I make myself using perlite vermiculite dolomite azomite soil from the yard kelp meal bone meal and blood meal and I mix all those and when I recycle them I take two at least and mix the potting mix of each so that it mixes the biome of each of them and strengthens the potting mix going forward and I also add in manure from the rabbits and the ducks to revitalize it that way as well now these pepper plants are all doing really good they end up being pepper trees when you have them indoors like this and over here is my hot habanero pepper tree I harvest that periodically and make pepper hot pepper powder out of it over here I have these ones these peppers look at that pepper there and then there's another one coming in back here they don't get as big inside but that's okay you can eat peppers at any stage you don't have to wait for them to be ripe here's more of these red I believe these are a hot pepper I have to taste them again and find out and there's just let them I kind of let them go a little bit and over here on the wall of it is the cucumber trellis where I have the cucumbers like this one they're not producing much fruit as I was hoping originally but this is a market more variety and it is producing fruit I'm gonna go ahead and seed save that I'm gonna wait for it to hopefully get bigger and produce some seeds and see if I can use those going forward and save the genetics to strengthen them for indoor growing and keep planting them out and as the soil continues to build maybe it's the lighting maybe it's the soil I'll have to continue to observe and figure that out as I go with that and then lemon trees I'm gonna have four of them there's one right here there's another one down here I got an up pot there's another one over here my rabbit actually chewed a few leaves off it I caught her in time and there's another one here I want to have them for the winter season to have them indoors a couple of them and I want to try to grow a couple out in the greenhouse once I have that built in this winter coming up so we'll see how that goes but I want to have lemons for my water and for the vitamin C for me to stay healthy all through the winter I want to have that for fresh fruit down here is another habanero pepper that's growing up it's just the same as that red one back there so these fabric pots back to that I roll them down halfway so that they can stay more shallow and the most of them are five gallons some are like eight gallon I believe and everything is cooling down in here as I go through this summer season out in the yard I'm dialing back and getting ready and plan for this winter's growing which I'm gonna have all three of my grow rooms back up and the kitchen grow area grow room really where I'm gonna build that little section under the cupboard and then I'm also going to have the corner where the rabbits are now and that's all going to be food this winter growing under there so really I have like four grow rooms it might as well just call it a grow house and back here because this one this bedroom where the cannabis is now and then this room where it's not operating right now I have to clean the floor a little bit it got messy and I'm going to lay a pond liner in there just like in here and in the other room so it stays more 
permanent and looks better and cleaner. Tapestries for the backdrop so that looks cool like overgrowth. And then the lights, I want to shine lights at the trellises that are going to be higher up on the walls. So starting here I want to face a light at it and get things really lit on the wall. How the lights are set up, they're just hanging, mounted up top. These avocado trees have been up. This one's about three years old now. These ones are younger. This one had the leaves die off, but it's growing new growth. Not sure what that was all about. Maybe there's not enough nutrients in the soil, but I'll, I'll go ahead and soon here, I'm gonna add more. I got beans and cucumbers and things that grow up. I'm gonna stop them from growing on the plants. I was letting that happen, but I think maybe that's causing them to feel like they're getting smothered or something like that. So I'm gonna stop with that and just let them grow up the trellises and the cords. And I'm companion planting things, so any pot that's got an open area, for the most part, I've been companion planting. Now I've ripped a lot of things out. This summertime is giving me time to really shrink down in here and reorganize for the fall into winter where I'm gonna set all the grow rooms back up. Major, this light in the kitchen grow room where the rabbits are now is going to be set up lower and have plants under it but not now just it's using as a light to keep these guys lit now here is a cage that i separated into three chambers so there's one here one here and one here a bigger one here for uh mama doe when they go to kindle i can set them up in here but then i have these two slots really for these mini rex boys that i still have the girl i had and gave her to a neighbor she was running around outside and it wasn't safe so I, I let a neighbor girl have her she really liked that and then down and in here is my babies from mama doe who's hanging out in here with us she hangs out in the house now and so she's she's chilling right here over in here back room grow room i have the cannabis that is budding so they're all budding right now and I've been actually trimming some off little by little and drying it out in my dehydrator and using it. It's not, I know it's not the proper way to cure them, but it's the quick way and I don't mind it at all. I still use it. Peach tree down here, potatoes, and then this is the run for the chickens in there. And then there's flowers here, amaranths and marigolds. And then this is some sweet peppers, potatoes tomatoes there's potatoes in these pots and there's also some corn there there's cucumbers there that still got to go in and more sweet peppers down here is the rabbits and then potatoes garlic brassicas which are broccolis and cabbage and then peas and bush beans peas on that trellis inside that trellis run then the pond the side of the pond is wood pile strawberries there's some squash back there potatoes in those fabric pots way back there some cannabis apple trees there is a stretch i just built with the tomatoes i just put in there and then there's a, some more beds that i built in front of the garden here in a new section that i just added on and then over there is potatoes and cucumbers on the trellises out there there's two more black trellises just like those that are going in back there. Then there is the pit. Strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, brassicas, peppers, bell peppers, tomatoes and tomato cages back there. There's also asparagus and squash back there. And then there's the chicken and the rabbit run with the New Zealands. And then the sex link egg layers and there's isa browns with them too and then there's the rabbit chicken tractor which has the ducks that swim in there right now and then there's two grow out sections for the rabbits maggot bucket system i have another maggot bucket system then this is a rabbit and duck run with the bucket tunnel which leads over here to this rabbit run then the archway where i have stuff growing tomatoes growing and squash growing and inside here is the animal house. This is the animal processing center where I do the chickens and the rabbits. Everything's still kind of a mess. I gotta get organized. 
as I go here this year which I'm setting up so much and doing so many projects all at once that I'm getting to it as we go down here is this guillotine that I built for the rabbits and it's held with this weight and a blade that I custom made all this stuff so I don't have to use the hopper popper that was too traumatic too barbaric for my tastes here are the kill cones for the chickens processing animals is a big deal it's a spiritual connection it's not something that should be taken lightly most people don't understand it they don't do it when you do do it and you have to take a life like that for your food you appreciate it more you appreciate life more you understand how finite how valuable this truly is and here you know hang the rabbits and then they will get skinned there processed here i have this little table for now this is an apple tree i've got apple trees up in front i built this pallet fence we're using pallets and then i'm getting these beds ready all in the front yard for food this one's still got to get ripped out this one was ripped out already i put strawberries here in this corner there's hot peppers over here separate from the sweet peppers in the back so that they don't cross and make my sweet peppers hot here is raspberries from the wild and i even put a pepper right there in between them and so that's all got to get ripped out still and uh, planted out at some point here apple tree apple tree apple tree apple tree apple tree another apple tree is going in down there and here is cherry tree it's got cherries in it now and they're starting to form you can see that there down here is strawberries so there's some strawberries on here that are ripe now I gotta pick these and eat these now and I'll eat those and there's more right here like that one there look at that Ugh. I come outside to my grocery store and over here there's a few more right does this one look like does this one look like that's good enough for me you can even let them get a little darker sometimes i pick them when they're not as dark as they could be and eat them still that there and those stumps are from trees that were cut out of here last year i'm just growing food around them I'm not gonna grind them up or anything there's strawberries around them right now that haven't had any fruit come in. Wild ones that I picked from the wild last year. There's a couple in there. You can tell they got smaller leaves. And then over here, I'm gonna do food. Tree line here between my neighbor's yard and mine. I still gotta just get it all ripped up and prepped up. That's towards the end of the year. Maybe I won't even have food in here this year, but I will for sure next year. We'll see how it all goes. Over here, I'm building compost piles. So there's the pallet fence, and then it separates here. Got some junk back here still, I gotta organize as I said. And building compost, compost, compost. So there's gonna be four of them in here. There's two good sized ones now. Another one I'm starting there. And I'm gonna put another one here. Leave it open a little bit to get through and in between. And then it'll be boom, 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 boom. Compost, and there's compost in the back. And that this is where I have a haystack still for the rabbits supplementing feed. And I'm going to replenish it real soon in the next month or two, probably, and get it ready for the winter. Bunch of hay bales, as well as work to save as much as I can of everything I harvest and dry it out still for the animals for the winter. Here's going to be food, too. This is an arch here that I set up just last year and at it in front here is squash, butternuts and then here behind it is two tomato plants. Over here on this side of it behind it is four tomato plants at every section. So my thought is these squash I'll train them up it and then as these tomatoes grow I'll tie them to it from the back and all goes well it will just take over and fill in ducklings are in here back there with the mama 
and then there's a little pool I put in the ground for them slightly so the ducklings can get used to being in the water and I built this whole thing two years ago for chickens initially but now it's ducks and rabbits the chickens are on the back side living with the other breed of rabbits the, the New Zealands these are the silver fox and then the Muscovy ducks there's a hen there's a little house because she's not actually going in here now that her ducklings are out here they don't use this ramp yet they're still little so she's been staying out here every night I put this house out so she can go in it but she hasn't and she likes it just standing outside with them underneath her to stay warm and here's a little water bowl I keep for them too and then I pour in feed pellets uh, chick starter and even chicken feed mix that I have in I so the babies can eat it and then everybody really just jumps on it and starts eating it then over here is this tractor chicken rabbit tractor which is a duck house now it's docked with this run here and there are rabbits and the ducks come through the ducks go in here and use this their pool another one that's a little bit bigger it's I can dump it and clean it out there's a water dish in there too and the rabbits actually come in here one of the does came in here and put kits they're not in here anymore because they're big now they're running around over there but they can work their way from here all the way over into that run and this section here is the chamber where chickens would go ducks can even go to lay eggs um, the rabbits found their way in here and one of them put babies right in this corner not long ago and I built this little section here so they don't fall out and fall down there's a ramp it stays suspended by that chain there when I move this thing around as a chicken or a rabbit tractor and it's gonna sit like this for a while I'm thinking probably until the end of the season even maybe through the winter these sections I built on the side of it are grow out sections for the rabbits where you see this grass in here they can't get out from it so they can come in here and grow out till they're sizable enough for harvest and then over here too where you see them all New Zealand's they're juveniles still there's nine of them in here there's probably a few in this box and this is like their little shelter it's a bin flipped upside down with a hole cut in it and then that there is a feed dish there's a water dish underneath this and I throw them grass chunks and I even I'm I'm waiting till they're a bit bigger more adult size on these ones before harvest because I want to get the animal fat the rabbit fat off of them which is really valuable highly nutritious so you got to wait for adult size before they really start building fat and over here there's a bunch of little babies running around in here these holes you see they've been building and digging holes into the side of the cliff they've been hunkering in making home and babies will pop out of here just randomly now it's surprising I get uh, surprised by little balls of fuzz my little meatballs here is maggot buckets where food scraps go inside and they deplete and then down here this whole new garden section that I just added on this is the new addition it was there at that post down and it was fenced I opened it took that out of there and built these new runs one two three four and there's another little one five just like that run with the beans in it and then here on the outer side is a perimeter of tomato plants so under each tomato plant is an egg as a fertilizer pack you crack a little hole in the top of the egg put it under the plant and then slowly it leaches nutrition out of the egg and feeds the plant I thought that was a clever trick and into the soil I mixed in some rabbit bedding and with the duck manure in it as well and also some wood ash from a fire I burnt right here and it's fertilizing the soil for the initial till of this soil I'm gonna leave it now no till and just add manure and compost onto the surface let the biome of the soil sit undisturbed is the idea with no till and it's healthier 
here's the pond that's still got to get completed but here on the walls of it you see there is grass and stuff growing and I'm gonna leave that and just harvest it little bits without pulling it so that it can build roots into this wall of this pond and strengthen it then this trellis two pieces there I still have like these here that's sitting beside this potato bed and I put cucumbers in there and then there's some garlics down and in there too on that one there's no garlics in there just the cucumbers and I'm going to also put cucumbers all on these two which I'm gonna set up like right here that's a wood pile and there's a couple cannabis sitting in here over here there's one cannabis they're sitting in tomato cages to help support the limbs as they grow bigger and there's another one over here Then in here is strawberries with some weeds. <laughs> and over there is a big old patch of weeds that took over bean plants I had there, but they took over with the weeds. I gotta get in there and weed that and feed it to the animals. A couple of few mounds, squash and melons. After I weed this in the next few days, it'll totally take over. The plants are starting now. And then here's compost that's building from animal bedding. You see this melon or squash, I'm not sure which one, big squash. And the idea is for them to take over in here some wood wood for my wood burning this season coming up these are stacks of canes from the blackberries that I'm saving up for the rabbits to chew on Down in here, we'll take a walk through. This is onion sets. Red, white, yellow. This is kale, garlic, potatoes, brassicas, corn, and radishes. I gotta thin them a little bit still. And then there is sweet peppers. And then this is beets, which aren't really sprouted up yet soon. Then the tomatoes are gonna get tied back to this welded wire, which is a four foot section, 50 foot roll I bought, and posts holding it in place. More tomatoes, a bunch of different types, cherries and beef steaks. They're all kind of just scattered throughout. I don't have labels on them, so I'll see what they are when they start to grow and ripen. And here is just a bunch of weeds taken over. I'm gonna get in there with my scythe, my little sickle, and harvest that, feed it to the animals. And then the beans and peas under the deck chicken coop with the maggot buckets for feed input for the chicken. And then over here is zucchinis and sweet peppers coming in with some cucumbers even. So that sits back here. And then there's potatoes back there. And the dang old rabbits. Okay, I'm trying to chew on potato. They get it when it starts to poke out of the fencing. They eat it up. I guess I can share a little bit. I'm set mama down here. <laughs> and back here, the rabbit run. So I'm gonna go check out the peach tree. Potatoes. Bunch of different types. Well, three different types. Store bought. Gold, red, russet. They're just kind of mixed around in there. And this peach tree. So you see the peaches, fruit there. There's got to be a couple hundred of them at least on here. They're getting fuzzy and coming in really nice. The whole perimeter is fenced with hardware cloth. It's like quarter inch square. See there? They're not getting through. Even this is one inch. They can't get through that either. And it's in the ground at least four inches, I want to say, everywhere. Probably more like six. So they can't dig under. You could even go deeper than that if you really want to. 
you might want to go eight or ten I think it's six mostly and it's good so they were before they were jumping up here and climbing through this more open area here the little babies can fit through there before I moved this dirt because it all made a, like a slope here when I was digging out this pond and I moved it out of the way now so they can't get up and in there and they were coming in here in my garden I had a crew of them there was a posse of them in here eating stuff but they didn't really do any damage they were just a little they're gone out of here now back in here this boy right here that brown one I really like him he's rare he was like a rare genetic trait of these guys the first brown one you see how they're all black mostly and then there's gray this is blackberry cane i pruned it this year and they love these i saved up stacks a couple stacks of them and i'm gonna feed them just as we go periodically and through the winter they'll have them to chew on they've ate this one down pretty good just over the past couple days these are from a toe strap I just you know utilize every bit of materials you can be clever and mechanical use everything like over here hey mama damn uh, over here are these posts I recycled just wood for them so that's cool it works really good and then this is cordage tying it together my little sickle I use this to harvest grass so I don't have to pull the dirt out and it can keep regrowing regeneratively and I can just harvest grass instead of weed whipping feed it to them the cannabis there and this is raspberries right here blueberries at these cross sections down here mainly at each cross section they're just little there's a bunch more strawberries look at these and then this here at this black trellis is cucumbers and then garlic is also down there and then potatoes and over here is another cannabis brassicas this is peppers tomatoes more brassicas more tomatoes and then there's squash on these mounds right here and then there's another mound back there and there's the apple tree apple tree potatoes I moved these potato pots from up top on the deck down here now they will get better Sun I'll water them over here the pond and then I got to finish taping the seam down there so that it doesn't leak. It had a little bit that I missed, so I got to fix that and then fill it. And then here's a squash. Now this is four days into strawberry season. This is my harvest. I'm harvesting twice a day now for lunch and for dinner. This is about what I'm getting more and more each day. This is day four. The first day I had one strawberry. Now I have this whole bunch here. Get them while they're ripe, while they're fresh that day, twice a day during the season. And then there's less chance for birds to get them, less chance for rot. Even you see there, there's some that are like halves. They, even if the birds get them, I still eat them. I just wash them off a little bit and eat them still. I figure those are the best ones. 
the birds know which ones to go for because they're the tastiest. So I want the ones the birds eat. Out there in my strawberry patch, I did find a few rotted ones. I'm just gonna throw these to her, let her eat them. And I threw them over to the chickens. They're a bit rotted more so than I wanted to scrape off and eat them, so I just tossed them to the chickens. And maybe there's some that are still somewhat white, not fully ripe, and they'll have some rot on them. Toss those to the chickens. Tomorrow, I'm going to be going to the Kroger and I'm going to stock up on more potato. I'll probably spend about a hundred bucks and really get a lot of potatoes for me to eat until my harvests are ready and to get more seed in the ground. I want to get double what I have out there right now. I have a good couple rows worth of potatoes planted out there right now. I want to have a couple more going into the summer and into fall for a good abundant fall harvest and put those seeds up for storage through the winter. It is going to be crucial to have potato to eat for the winter and seed to get through into next spring. I want to have a bunch of seed, all my seed. I essentially don't want to have to buy any more potatoes after this year, ever again in life.